The global scripts folder is a really useful feature of Hives, but I don't think many of you are using it, or at least I haven't seen many people using it. But I use it all the time, I find it really helpful. And it's a great way to share scripts between projects. So if you've got a project with a, one script in it and you want to use that same script in several other projects, rather than copying it between all the other projects, so you have like five or six or seven copies of the same script in multiple places, you can use the global scripts folder to share that one script between all the different projects. And that means if you make a change to this script, it will change in all of those projects. And you don't have to update each copy individually. You've just got one copy, which all of the projects can read from. So let me show you how to use it. So I've got a folder here called uh, Shared High Scripts. And in here I have two subfolders. And these are just full of little scripts that I use. So these are sort of general purpose scripts. And then I've got modules that do specific things. So in highs, we go to the project preferences and we're going to go down to the scripting settings section. And we're going to set this one global script path. And we're going to set that to our shared high scripts folder. So you just click the browse button and then you can point it to the location you want. So in my case, it's this shared high scripts folder and you hit OK and the path will be set in here as well. So you can double check that. Then you hit save. So let's say you want to import a script into your main interface script using an include statement. So just like you would for any other include. So usually you'd write include and then you'd just put the name of your script dot JS in there. But we want to get it from our shared folder. Now we don't want to put the whole path in there because then we end up with this hard coded path. And if you at a later date move your shared scripts to a different folder, it's going to mess up all of your projects. So we don't want to do that. Instead, we can use a wildcard that's built into highs. So we can write curly brace global underscore script underscore folder and then the closing curly brace. And this must all be in capitals. And this is the wildcard that we'll use. So let's just um, give ourselves a bit more room here. OK, now we just need to finish this path and make it actually point to a script. So we'll just go in here and find one of my scripts. Uh, libraries. OK, we'll use this helpers script. So this is in highs, utility scripts, forward slash libraries. So we'll just add that there. And you can see you don't need to have a forward slash after the wildcard. So you can just go straight into the subfolder name. And then it was helpers.js. That was capitalized. Let's just do that. Okay, so I'll hit F5. Okay, and I've got an error. And what it's actually telling me is there's an error in my helpers.js file, but it has worked. It's included the script. So if we open a new tab, we can see the helpers.js script there. And it's actually saying there's an error on line 15. So that should be a local variable. So we've got this note letters here. I've just changed that var to local. If I hit F5, and now if I actually open that script in a text editor, you can see it's changed it to local here. So it's actually written that change to the script. So that means any other projects that are using this script will also have now just received that little bug fix. So really handy to uh, to be able to do it like this. So now if we go back to on init and hit compile, so there are no more errors in that script. So you'll notice also that in my scripts, I always use namespaces. So it's called helpers.js, so I have a helpers namespace. So now I have access to all of the functions in this file as if it was part of my project. So I can type helpers dot, and if I hit escape, I get the autocomplete, and it even includes all of my functions from the helpers.js script in the autocomplete. So um, here's one, we'll just use this one. So it is even, we can put in a number, and we'll have to wrap this in console.print. And if I hit F5, it will tell us if this number is odd or even. So that's a one, so that's an even number. Change that to nine. It's an odd number. And that's just one of my functions in here. There it is, is even. So that's a really easy way to um, share a script between projects. Now, something else you might want to do, let's just remove that, is if you have scripts that are more like modules, so they're not things that you're going to include in your main interface script, 
but they're like reusable modules, like maybe have a note filter or a key switch handler, something like that. You can add that into your project as well. So we'll add a MIDI processor. So here's our blank MIDI processor. We're going to right click in the header section, this black part here. We're going to select connect to external script and we're just going to go to our shared scripts folder. And now I can choose one of my various uh, module scripts that I have. So if I go to modules, so I've got all these scripts that I use between multiple projects. So you can see I've got one here for release triggers. Uh, I've got one here for key switching, um, articulation switching, ADSR control. So I can choose from any of these now and just to import them. So I don't have to keep rewriting the same scripts over and over again. Uh, let's see, which one shall I have? I think I have a note filter in here. There it is, note range filter. So we'll add that script. So now this script is loaded in here. And I didn't have to do anything extra. It's just here and I can easily share this script between projects. So whenever that script is updated, perhaps I'll update it in a different project. When I reopen this project, it's going to have all the updates as well. Most of the time that's a good thing, but you've got to watch out because you may introduce a bug when you're editing the script in another project. And then when you come back to this project, you'll have a new bug to figure out. But most of the time, this is really helpful and a great time saver. So if I save the XML for this project, let's call it test. And we'll go to this project folder and open the XML in a text editor. And we'll see where the script has been included. Here it is note range filter and you can see it's got this wildcard in here in the xml global script folder so that's how highs will always know that it's in the global script folder and that means even if you change where your global scripts are kept as long as the rest of the path doesn't change highs will relocate automatically to that new folder and you won't have any issues if you do want to make this copy sort of independent you can right click in the header and select disconnect from external script and now this exists only in your project. So now you can change it and edit it however you like, and it won't affect other projects that are using this same script. And if I save the XML again, and we open it once more in a text editor, you can see it's now just inserted as a script processor. There's no longer that link to an external script file. And if we go to the scripts folder, it's made a new script in here, which is actually the script we have open in highs. If you change your mind and then want to reconnect it, it's just the same process as before. Just connect to external script and uh, go through to the shared scripts folder and connect it to uh, whichever one it was, uh, not rage filter. And now we're back to where we were before. Okay, so I hope you found this useful. I really recommend using the global script folder. It's just a great time saver and it's a really good way to manage scripts. And if you're using Git as well for tracking different versions and changes in your code, it will make it really simple because you only have to track one copy. You don't have multiple copies and then have to sort of merge between them and things like that. If you've got any questions, let me know. If you like this video and you would like to see more, click the subscribe button or join me on Patreon. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.